Hello and welcome to my channel, Simply This Life, where I am on a journey to a more simple, minimal, and mindful lifestyle. If that is something you're interested in, click the subscribe button. You can follow along my journey and gain some ideas, hopefully some tips along the way. But today we're going to be talking about toys. This is a topic that I avoid because toys are so tricky, but I decided once I started this journey that it was, I had to face it. So today we're going to be talking about how to declutter your toys. I would also like to thank Action Air for teaming up with me on today's video. Just to give you a reference, I have three kids ranging from one up to nine, two boys and a baby girl. So we have accumulated a lot of toys over the years from birthdays, Christmases, all of that, and I've noticed a trend. I asked my then five-year-old why he and his brother hadn't been playing in the toy room. Why hadn't they played in there for days? And he laughed and said, Mom, I forgot we even had a toy room. <laughs> oh my gosh! That was a lesson to me. The messier the toy room is, the more overcrowded with toys it is, the more overwhelming it is to the child, and it makes perfect sense if you think about it. If I'm in a place that completely overwhelms me with too much stuff, I am uninspired. I don't even know where to start. Um, it's just no fun to be in a room that is completely overfilled. So I know kids are the same way. I have proof <laughs> from my own. So this is how I went about the toy clutter, declutter. <laughs> there was too much clutter. So there's this big controversy. Should you have your kids help you declutter the toy room? Should you not? I say don't, don't do it. Just go in there with a couple of trash bags and a box or more trash bags for donations and go through all the toys. And in the research and studying that I've been doing recently about the best way to go about this, I have found that choosing categories that you know you want to keep first and then chucking everything else, I don't mean really throwing it away. Not really. Please, please donate it. I knew that if it was a toy that my kids play with often and that sparked imaginative or creative play or that was like hands on, I love stuff like building, which also goes along with like creativity and imagination, I knew that I wanted to keep it. That's just the experience that I want to give my child. And I think that's a really, really great thing to think about. What kind of experience do you want them to have? What kind of childhood do you want them to have? I think thinking kind of on a bigger level, a grander scale than just like, is this toy something he likes or is it not? That's really good, but I think also thinking about what kind of childhood do I want my kids to have is a really, really good one. So I knew that I wanted my kids to build, be creative, use their imagination, and I want toys that bring them together to help them learn how to share and take turns and use their creativity together, use their energy together to create amazing childhood memories. One toy that I definitely knew we needed to keep was this amazing bounce house from Action Air. I'll have the links down below. Something that I love about this is that, like I said, it is something that all three of my children can participate in playing with together, which is kind of hard, honestly, to find a toy that all three of them can enjoy just because of the age gap. And I've got this little girl and these boys. It just has always been really hard for me to find things that they can actually play with together. But this has been completely awesome. In fact, we've had this bounce house for about five months and it's just been so much fun. This one looks like a little cottage and we play with this inside. We actually have two. I'll show you the outdoor one here in a minute. But this one we just set up in the living room and my living room isn't that big, honestly, and it fits really well in there. The kids are able to jump around, have a really fun time. I love that it has this little ball pit and then it also has a little basketball hoop inside that the older boys can play with, this slide. So it's just a really, really great little investment if you're looking for something, A, that you want your kids to be able to do together, and then if you live where it's colder, <laughs> this hair, it cracks me up. If you live where it's colder, then it's a great thing to do inside the house gives your kids exercise and then it stores up super super compact 
So if you're worried about, you know, oh, I'm trying to be more minimal and it's just something huge that I've got to store, don't worry about it. It actually folds up super, super, super small. Um, much smaller than you would expect for seeing the size of it blown up. We have no problem storing it whatsoever. So this has been a really great thing. Our family has loved it. The kids have enjoyed it and it's so fun to see them playing together. This one is the Bounce Castle. It has a much wider slide. It's a little bit bigger and it fits great in the backyard when school, um, was just starting in August. My kids had so much fun playing with it, but it'll be a fun thing again to pull out in the spring and let the kids play with. It also comes with all the materials that you need to patch any holes and to stake it into the ground. Again, all the links you need will be down below. Now let's talk about how I went about purging my kids' toys. So here's what I did. I put everything into the bags, donate and trash. And then at the very end, I called my two older boys together and I said, all right guys, here's what I kept. I kept these toys in your toy room. How does that sound? And they agreed, both of them. I was actually really surprised that that sounded perfect. They did not ask to go back looking through the bags. Now, sentimental items are really, really, really tricky. If the child has a certain memory associated with it, I mean, it's really, in my opinion, not a big deal if they keep it. Grandma gave this to me and that's why I love it. I think that's part of this whole minimal ideal and idea is that you just keep things that are both useful to you and meaningful to you. So if they add value to your life in some way, you can keep them. <laughs> Don't think that you have to get rid of a certain number of items or you can only have certain types of things to be called a minimalist or to live more minimally. So I have a couple of ideas for sentimental items. One, if it's something that they really, really wanna keep, just let them keep it. I think that's amazing, but also put it on display, keep it out. Don't hide it away because it's something special. Um, this is something that I've learned as I've done my reading and learned so much more about this way of living is that you actually want to bring sentimental items out and use them and love them. That way you can enjoy them and then everybody in the family knows what it's all about. Maybe there's a really cool story associated with the toy and you can keep that story going through the generations and then you can pass the toy down but everybody knows who it was from, why it was special. So I think that's a really cool thing. Since I am at the very beginning of this journey, I know I have a long way to go, but the first purge was a huge success. I got rid of at least 50% of what we had in our toy room, including books. I was able to fill an entire car load and take it to be donated at the Goodwill. So I felt really good. In fact, my kids, after they saw me doing this, in the toy room specifically, they started going through things in their bedroom, their clothes, and made their own donation bags, which was really amazing. It almost makes me emotional because I really want that for them. I want them to feel like we don't need all of this. We don't need an excess and we have so much to give. So that was something I didn't expect at all. And that really reaffirmed to me that I'm on the right path and that this is the right thing for our family. So what I did is I took my son and we drove everything down to the Goodwill and he was able to see it get donated. I could only fit one kid in the car. Every other spot was completely full. So my one son and I were able to go down and it's just been a really cool experience. Our toy room, we're going to move down to the basement. We're going to do some rearranging and definitely get a fabulous organization system going. But for now, having cleared out half of those toys, we just feel so much clearer thinking the toy room is more inspiring. The kids are more inclined to go in there. And since we did it right before Christmas, there was just more room for the new toys. And these those could go like front and center on the shelves instead of just getting like piled on top of things that weren't getting played with, mixed in and lost. And I feel like that's how it happens. I feel like if you don't go through your toys, if you're not constantly purging and keeping kind of a cap, whatever it is that you decide on your toys, that's how things start getting lost. 
pieces missing, broken, and then favorite toys get forgotten, which I think is such a bummer. Another thing you can do too, if you're worried your kids are gonna miss something, like I said, I've been ruthless. I've been on a total rampage and I've just been donating things as soon as I can pull them out of my home just in general because I want it gone. But another thing you can do if your kids haven't had the opportunity to let you know, there's certain things that they really, really wanna keep, you can make a special box and set that aside of things that you think they might ask for. They're like, where are my Pokemon cards? You can be like, oh, don't worry. Pull them out and you've saved the day. So if you're worried, don't rush it off to the Goodwill that second. Just hang on to it for like two weeks to a month, as long as you want. Something else I'm doing is a toy rotation, especially with my little girl's toys. She had a birthday recently, so her toys are new and she's only one. So these toys are in amazing condition. I know she's gonna love them, especially like as she gets into her toddler years, they're toys that can grow with her. So and again, I didn't wanna overwhelm her with too many. So I just cut her toys in half. I'm storing half of them. And then after about six months, I'll go ahead and just rotate through all those awesome toys and she'll feel like she has something brand new. Another really cool idea is if you feel like, oh, my kids have just played with these toys to death and you kind of feel like they're getting bored of the toys that they have, try and orchestrate like a neighborhood toy swap. I think this would be an incredible way to get new toys into your home and to share the toys that you have and that you aren't even using and then you're not buying new ones you're not spending any money and you're being really really nice to the environment which is great so that's an idea i have too so the last thing i did in the toy room were the books and so this took a while i had my kids help me cody came in my husband and helped me at the very very end too and it took us a good 30 minutes just to separate the books into the things we wanted to keep things we didn't want to keep and then i did kind of organize the books but we got rid of i don't know 40 percent of our books and we're just keeping our very favorites. We didn't let anything go that we've loved over the years or have even gotten recently and loved. We're just going to pass those on and already did <laughs> pass them on to some other child by donating them to the Goodwill. Stay tuned for the toy room organization video and I'll give you a tour of the new office which is now the toy room. Make sure again that you're subscribed if you want to follow along my journey and learn more about minimalism, what it's all about and how it can benefit your life. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.